Hello, my darlings, my lovely transfer brothers and sisters. Mwah! Welcome to Love, Truth, and Beauty. This is episode 356. And uh, in today's video, I am continuing with populating my 58 or more video series playlist by reading a lot of translation that has gone from the Russian to the Arabic to the English of hacking the technogenic system by Vadim Zalin, who brought Transurfing to the universe. Now, we hope that Vadim translates the book to English very soon, but until he does that, we will talk about it in English from other translations uh, and with the personal efforts by my friends Mahil Duat and Theodora Slavia, who took it upon themselves to take on the task of sharing its wealth of knowledge, particularly during this time of our human history. So I'm doing my part to share this this invaluable information that can be integrated into knowledge and further integrated into wisdom. So grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and allow me to read to you chapter 26 of Mohajo Wad's, Mohil Jawad's, and Theodor Azavi's translation of Hacking the Technogenic System. This chapter is titled Living Water. Now, in this chapter, I will answer questions on the subject of living water. Question. You say we should drink alkaline water, but author Z asserts the opposite, that we should drink acidic water. So where is the truth? I did not recommend alkaline water, but I recommended living water because living water reacts in an alkaline manner due to the negative interaction between oxidation and reflux factor and not because of the presence of alkaline earth mineral salts. Living water contains antioxidants that are molecules in which there is a free electron. But dead water has an acidic reaction because the oxidation and regression factor in it are positive. Mostly in dead water, there are free radicals and suction cup molecules that lack an electron. Living water rejuvenates the body and charges it with energy. For this reason, a person can drink living water as much as he or she wants. But dead water has a bacterial compound and is used only for therapeutic purposes and according to a specific system. And I am not qualified to speak in the field of medical treatment, so I cannot make prescriptions for treatment with dead water. Now, we move on to the second part of the question and say that author Z confused everyone. So he confused them because according to his advice, acidic water shouldn't necessarily be introduced to the meals. In addition to this, it is recommended to drink an analyzer of citric acid powder. But the author's theory was developed for its water environment, which is rich in calcium salts, such as areas located in the lower regions of the Great River Basins, for example. It is known that the coarse salts help to form deposits on the walls of the vessels and inside of the joints. The acidic water may help to some extent in the process of neutralizing the formation of deposits of these salts, but the latter does not happen at all unless you drink harsh water. But the question that arises in this context is, what kind of necessity makes you drink this harsh water? Filter it through a distiller and drink as much as you like. I could have added others, but I don't see an author Z's point of view, anything that deserves attention, and for one reason only, but it is not a reason, which is that he attacked Paul Bregg and Janity Malakov. And this is not an acceptable position because what Brig and Malakoff presented for healthy safety of the world, author Z, could not dream of. Can we trust those who slander the teachings of others? Personally, I will not mention the name of author Z anymore, and an expert in this field can't answer my opinion without bothering. Question, can we always drink distilled water? Answer, yes, this is possible, but it is preferable that it is not purely distilled, but it must be soaked in it slate and flint because all body fluids dissolve in electricity and therefore drinking water must contain some minerals. And as a minimum, the slate stone and flint or flint stone alone suits this goal. Question, is it true that slate and 
flint lose their properties after half a year? Answer, this is true, and therefore it is necessary to wash the stones at least every once at least once every two weeks and then replace the stones with new ones every six months because a thin, hard layer could have formed on the surface of the stones. And even if you use distilled water in household conditions, you will not be able to get sterile water. Question, can we use a filter instead of a sterilizer? Answer, yes, this is possible. Its use is easier and the price is lower. But the truth is that the distillation device gives better quality water, and this is evident from the taste of the water itself. The filter purifies the water good enough, even though solid salts, even from solid salts, but what we must know is that filtered water is perishable. So we should not drink it immediately, but before that, we must put it under the sun with slate, flint, or aquatic analyzer. Question. Your experience in organizing the production of living water is interesting. What equipment do you use and what is its size? Answer, first, you have to get distilled water. And I use a distillation device, Tioman Medico, and sometimes a filter. These are prestige without additional metals. Then the distilled water is poured into an enamel tank with a volume of 25 liters. At the bottom of the tank are placed stones, which are about one kilogram of flint and one kilogram of slate. It is not, and it is not necessary to pay attention to the time of placing the water, but two hours will suffice. It is preferable that the tank is covered with a cotton cloth in order that dust does not seep into it. And the water must see the light of day before it is consumed and not necessarily be exposed to sunlight directly. Therefore, the tank is filled with distilled water. We must remove the cloth for an hour. Why do we do this? Why do we do this? Immediately after distillation, the water acquires a brittle structure and more precisely, it generally loses its structure. The water is technical water and has not been touched by natural minerals or sunlight and therefore it is not suitable from a psychological point, a physiological point of view for the human body. The astronauts and sailors who drank this most often got ill. In order for water to become suitable for the human body, it must be exposed to daylight. In other words, the composition of water must communicate with the sun. There is a partial role for slate and flint in converting water into natural water that is suitable for the human body. It is not necessary to remove the lower layer of water because it is clean water, but it is necessary to wash the stones with running water every two weeks. Before using the stones for the first time, they should be brushed, especially the slate stone. But do not put too many stones at once because the new stones give a lot of minerals to the water. The second stage is the activation stage. In other words, the preparation of living water. Personally, the ATT-1 electric activator suits me. The activation time is related to the device indicator and may extend from a minute to an hour. But the main criterion for the correct duration is that there should be no smell from the outer cup and there should not be any alkaline taste. And the dead water in the ceramic cup should not have any taste, but it can have slight acidic smell and we can hardly smell it. The main physico chemical indicators of living water are oxidation and reflux, which equals 8 to 8.5 pH. That is 200 minus 150 minus. Dead water can be preserved for a whole day and then returned to the tank. With time, oxidation and reflux, whether negative or positive, can turn into a neutral factor. In fact, dead water maintains its properties for a longer period of time than living water, and we can judge this by its smell. The last stage is the final shaping, and we pour the living water into the cup and over the hydrodisc analyzer. Then it is stirred with a small wooden stick vigorously and counterclockwise. We will summarize the rest of the chapter through the following points. Number one, 
You can carry living water with you all day long and enjoy its refreshing power while others exhaust themselves with heavy drinks. And we are not exaggerating when we say that heavy drinks exhaust the body. And the only exception here is the infusion of herbs and living water. And even fresh fruit juice is not a drink, but a food. The body needs pure water above all to purify and maintain fluid balance. But coffee, tea, and other drinks, they lead to an increase in the density of the blood and its viscosity. So do not forget to clean your mouth with water half an hour after drinking coffee or tea. It is inappropriate to exhaust your body all day with heavy drinks. And finally, do you want a body like a clear mountain river or a body like a stagnant swamp? If you want more information on living water, please refer to my other books on the subject. Number two, after the activation process, the water acquires an unpleasant taste, like a chemical taste. So what happened here? The water should be pure and sterile or filtered using a filter and then put over slate and flint stones. The time of activation of such water is determined on the indicator in the electrical device used here. If the indicator is in the green zone, the activation period will not exceed one minute. And if the indicator is between green and yellow, it will take three minutes. But if the indicator is at zero, then it will take an hour. Three, cups and electrical connections get dirty over time, so they must be cleaned at least once a month. Here, we must disconnect the device from the current electric current and pour 6% vinegar over it and leave it for half an hour. Then wash everything properly with water. Number four, should the spring water be charged by the activator? The spring water is harsh and if you put it into the tonic, it will give you an analyzer full of sediment. And these sediments are hard salts that your body will have to get rid of somehow. The only advantage of spring water is that it contains salts, but this preference is conditional on the quality of spring water if it is located in an area where the environment is clean. Number five, is it true that switching to living water may cause harm to the body according to the opinion of some doctors? There are no negative repercussions on the body and living water tastes good and is always sought by the soul, not only when we feel thirsty. Number six, I do not belong to the sect of spiritual teachers, nor to the sect of spiritual seekers. To belong to a certain group means that you have joined a group and thus adhere to certain beliefs. I do not admit any form of ideological inertia, nor do I call for any doctrine or impose any choice, but I present information that helps you choose. Number seven, it seems that the issue of living water is an, is an issue that does not deserve our attention or to put effort and time. And it is something that is unnecessary for some people, and it's just an extra burden. Everyone knows that bad gasoline damages a car engine, and that is why people choose good gasoline in order to maintain the car's engine. But why do the same with our bodies to preserve it through living water? Good question. Number eight, the question that arises here, what do you want and what do you not want? The intention is the determination to make up your mind, to move and get, and from here, it all begins. So the logic here is very simple. The strength of intent corresponds perfectly to the level of energy. In a clean body, energy flows as smoothly and freely as water in a pure mountain river. The cleanliness of the vessels and arteries as well as the cleanliness of the energy channels is largely related to the quality of water. Therefore, all this is not unnecessary trouble, but it is caring for the most important parts of your body. Number nine, the process of preparing high quality water can also be employed in the process of exercising intention's power. The quality of water itself is directly related to the intention that you employ in what you do. In a clear sense, if you are doing your work in an automatic way and without awareness in a lazy manner, then it will not show any intention. But if the situation is different, it is done as follows. With discernment and awareness, you must realize the importance of what you do. Consciously, you have to take into account the importance of what you are doing at this moment. 
with all your heart, you do what you do for yourself. At this moment, your water is gaining strength and it will not just be H2O, but will be an intent written on liquid and the intent will come back to you with double energy. Number 10. Living water rejuvenates the body and charges it with energy, and you can drink from this as you like. Number 11, solid salts lead to the formation of deposits on vessel walls and joints. Number 12, all fluids in the body are dissolved by electricity, so drinking water must contain some minerals. Number 13, the structure of the filter water is very fragile, so do not drink it immediately because it is necessary to treat it before that. Number 14, before the first use, the slate and flint must be thoroughly brushed and do not put too many stones in the water at once because the minerals are very strong in new stones. Number 15, the living water should not contain any smell, no alkaline taste, no sedimentation. And if there are sediments, this means that you are not using the right equipment. Number 16, the body needs living water to purify and maintain fluid balance. The strength of intention is directly proportional to the level of energy. In a, number 18, or that was 17, the strength of intention is directly proportional to the level of energy. Number 18, in a clean body, energy flows as smoothly and as freely as the flow of water in a clear mountain river. Number 19, the purity of the arteries and joints, as well as the purity of the energy channels, is closely related to the quality of the water. Number 20, so this is not all meaningless or unnecessary trouble, but it is caring for and maintaining the most important parts of the body. The intention returns to where it is started, carrying along double energy. Where does this energy come from? And what is the essence of the intention exercise? This is what deserves to be answered in detail. And this is what we will do in the next chapter, which is entitled The Law of Luring Power. Okay, my loves. That is my speech. And until next time, my beauties and my fellow trans surfers, here's to your love, truth, and beauty. Mwah.